Good afternoon, everyone. Hello again, and welcome to High Top Sports Network's presentation of WPIAL Class 5A Section 1 Varsity Baseball. My name is Josh Schreckengoss. Today we have the Penn Hills Indians visiting the Armstrong River Hawks here at the home of the River Hawks, Armstrong Junior Senior High School. 300 Buffington Drive here in Scenic Manor Township. And right now, the Hawks have two men in scoring position. Penn Hills went in order in the top of the first inning. Scoreless right now. We'll get you up to date here just as quickly as possible. No, oh, well, apologies. It's 2 nothing Armstrong. Sorry about that. Uh, you had to wait for my game changer to update there. I was uh, messing with some technical stuff on this side. So apologies for that. So 2 nothing there, as you can see on your screen. Don't know why my 2 went small. On the mound for Penn Hills, Bowser at the plate. Zach Wiles. Wiles swings and misses. So the count now full, three and two, two outs. And our full count sponsor is Nationwide Logistics. Ride with the best. If you're looking for a new career, check out Nationwide Logistics. Look them up online, nationwidelogistics.com. That ball just missing at the knees. Bowser wanted it, but Wiles takes. Four ball four, so the bases are loaded for the Riverhawks. As I said, we'll get you up to date here. And this is how Armstrong started the game. Chase Jablonski led off with a walk. And Nick Kinner bunted him over. Oh, excuse me, Jablonski remained at first base after that bunt attempt. Then there was a single by Mason Schreckengoss. Line drive to center field. I believe there was a misplay there. I kind of looked up when I heard the bat. Saw a little bit of a misplay out there in center field. All the way around comes Jablonski after he stole second. No throw to the plate. Then there was a walk. Badak, Logan Badak walked. And then Braden Wright hit a ground ball, reached on an error by Bowser at the mound. And that pitch fouled away. And then there was a pop up. Mason Trekengoss actually scored on a wild pitch prior to that sequence. And that's where we are. Badak advanced to third, right to second. And that was Rory Peshear that popped out on that sequence. And then you just saw Zach Wiles walk, ground ball, third base, picked up, and stepped on third for the force out. Mitchell with a nice glove there at the hot corner. So that'll make it 2 nothing. Riverhawks after the first inning here on High Top Sports Network. Josh Regengoss with you. I had to get some hydration uh, for the old vocal cords right there. Now let's figure this out, this goofy little two. It got real small there. Fun time. So last night, I don't know if you were able to tune in to the network, but we actually uh, did something for the community last night. Uh, we were requested by Armstrong Junior Senior High School to broadcast the Republican candidate debate for the 63rd Legislative District, House of Representatives seat, on the line there. And, uh, you know, as we like to, to tell folks that ask, we are non-political here at High Top Sports Network. However, you know, when an entity requests us to help out, uh, it's very, very rare that we would say no. Uh, this particular event, it kind of it runs in line with the events that we did last year in the fall. The AP government and politics class here at Armstrong has put together a student-led debate series. So last year we had the school board members and the Armstrong County commissioners. Their debates were broadcasted on our network. And so we did the same thing last night for the Republican Party and their four candidates vying uh, in the April 23rd primary for a chance to represent this area. Uh, Armstrong County, part of Clarion County as well, in the 63rd District in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. So just don't uh, want anyone to get any ideas. We're not making any political statements here at High Top. We are 
apolitical, I guess you could say. So we are on to the second inning here. 2 nothing Riverhawks. RBI single by Mason Schreckengost and scoring on a wild pitch was Schreckengost. So he was able to get home and give the Riverhawks a 2 nothing lead. Armstrong picked up their first section victory of the year yesterday at Penn Hills. I had it up here a uh, second ago. There's a swing and a chopper towards short. Barehanded, picked and fired across in time. What a heck of a play right there at short. Oh, my goodness. Nick Kinner. Uh, I talked to Coach uh, for Armstrong head coach Vincent Santelmo, and I said, uh, you know, what about Nick Kinner? You know, he played a lot of second last year. He goes, we're going to try him at short. He's got a great glove. Well, he didn't need the glove that time. He used a bare hand and picked it and got a speedy runner heading down the line right there. And that was Mitchell uh, trying to bust it down the line, but what a nice play by Kinter. So, folks, uh, as you may understand, we have another camera here, and for some reason I'm not picking it up, but we'll get you zoomed in here sooner or later. Uh, hopefully sooner. Try and get this uh, two-look thing going on here. Lefty-on-lefty uh, -lefty matchup here, right delivering and that is Austin at the plate right now for the Indians Indians 0 and 6 on the year uh, Riverhawks I believe are 2 and 4 uh, they're 1 and 4 in section I know that as I said they picked up their first section win yesterday that ball chopped foul by Austin. We can take a quick look at that game yesterday. I'm just going over some of our out of town scores from yesterday. That ball popped toward the left side, ranging over Shrekengoss. It's going to get out of play. You know, the Leechburg Blue Devils saw, uh, baseball team beat Summit Academy 24 to 1. That is not a fun day for Summit Academy. West Shimokan Wolves. Uh, they are continuing to just hammer the opposition. In the, uh, wow, 11-0. Uh, they beat Purchase Line yesterday. That's the softball team. They're currently undefeated, 6-0. And, oh. and uh, another shutout victory yesterday for the Wolves. Over purchase line and taking a look, Liam Mondi, five inning shutout. Only gave up two hits. And let's see what our girl Lily Jordan did. Oh, a rare hitless day for Jordan. Over three, but she did score a run, draw a walk. Big hitter was Cameron Vandervoort. She had three hits yesterday for the Wolves, and Aliyah Talmadge also with three hits. And right. Oh, man, that was grooved and ripped into the gap, and that's going to be extra bases here for Austin. Good throw in, and just under the tag is Austin. Boy, right really grooved that fastball. And, uh, you know, it's hard for a lefty. I hit left-handed, and you're hitting against left-handed pitchers. It's, an, it's, it's a weird, I don't even know how to really describe it. It's a weird angle, weird look, and every lefty throws differently. The arm slot is always different. But right there, give credit to Austin sitting patiently and waiting. It looked like a fastball, and it was just right out over the plate. So that one uh, ripped for a one-out double. And right now we got Spearman at the plate. He swings and fouls it. Right side gets over into the bleachers. Logan Madak at first giving chase.
things. Sorry, I'm standing up and doing things. My mic doesn't come with me. I have a different mic. Oop! I unplugged it. There we go. I have a different mic with me today. I sound like a radio DJ. Playing all the cool hits here on High Top Radio. I always wanted to be a radio DJ. Uh, I always thought it was cool when I was a kid to spin the tracks that the young folks were listening to. I liked Casey Kasem's Top 40 Countdown back in my younger days. Yeah, I'm dating myself. And this doesn't work. My remote. Bummer. I'm going to try uh, something a little different here. I'll keep this with me. So right now, out at second base is Austin after the one out. Double ripped by Austin into the right center field gap. So Spearman down to first with the walk. Two aboard. Oh, uh, uh, Bollinger came into pinch run. I believe Spearman. Uh, what did he do? Let's find out. Oh, yeah, Spearman lined out to Jablonski at second. Austin stayed at second. And then... Bollinger drew the walk, so two down. Braden Wright has two on. Swing and a miss. That was a good change up there by Wright. And swung on and fouled to the right side there. Out of play. And so I'm going to miss strike three. That ends the inning. The Indians started the runners in motion right there, but Wright gets the swinging strikeout to end the second inning. 2 nothing Riverhawks here as we get ready to head to the third. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Just uh, fiddling. Just doing a little fiddling here, trying to uh, make this broadcast a little bit better for you out there. So the Riverhawks have a runner at second base. One out, Jablonski out there at second. If you can hear things crashing in the background, that's just me. Just dropping stuff. Jablonski on with a walk. And then a stolen base. Did the same thing his first time up. That ball smacked to the right side and out of play. So Jablonski, a couple of walks, a couple of stolen bases. Well, I don't think you want to see me on the webcam. I don't know why that came up. You definitely don't want to see me. I'm up here in the landing. 514 feet away. That ball in there for strike three. Caught him looking. The backwards K sponsored by Bugsy's Pizza and Wings. Downtown Catanning. Check them out. Bugsy's Pizza and Wings. Get yourself something good tonight. Uh, highly recommended by the high top crew is Bugsy's. So don't be afraid to get your hands a little bit greasy. It's well worth it. So now Bowser trying to work out of it with Jablonski at second base. Jablonski takes off. He's got a great jump. He's diving, and he's safe. Another stolen base. That's three on the afternoon for Chase Jablonski. And he got a great jump off of Bowser right there. Just took off as soon as Bowser got the – he basically just uh, started to lift his leg, and that's when Jablonski took off. 3-0 now. To Mason Schreckengoss, staying away from him with an RBI opportunity. That ball high and outside. So Schreckengoss on with a walk. Wouldn't be surprised to see him going right off the bat. So now to the plate. With two aboard and two down. Oops. Well, they're getting a pinch runner there for Mason Trekkengost. He draws the walk. And in the pinch run, we're going to wait and see who that is. Logan Badak got the play at FYI. That's who I was. Going to say, and then I saw the pinch runner coming in. So, Logan Badak up with two aboard. That ball, curveball by Bowser. Just missed. He wanted that one. And they're just going to intentionally walk Badak. And load the bases up. I believe at the plate right now is Braden Wright. So chance to help himself, the big lefty. We've seen him flex those muscles at the plate, show some power for the Riverhawks. And in there for a strike is Bowser's first pitch to Wright. His counterpart on the mound this afternoon. And right swings and hits a line drive to the gap in left center. That's going to score a pair. Throw to third. A good one. And got him at third base. So Baynak gets gunned by Austin from center field to third base, but not before Braden Wright delivers a two out, two run single to put the Riverhawks up 4 0. And that's going to take us to the top half of the third inning. Riverhawks 4, Penn Hills Indians 0. Josh Reckonglast here, High Top Sports Network. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back in a jiff.
Please don't. Come on, man. Let's just stay.
Well, I promise I was not avoiding you right there. I was just trying to get that view that you now see in your upper right-hand corner. Uh, the old pitcher, hitter, catcher, umpire, that ball dropping just foul. And Rory Peshear out there at second base, one away for the River Hawks here in the bottom half of the third inning. They lead 4 nothing, And that's one of the many things that I need to update. Make that a four, eh? So right now at the plate is Mason Mills, the catcher for these River Hawks, facing Bowser still in there at 62 pitches. Bowser tries a curveball there, missing low. And uh, I'm going to see if, well, my mic's turned all the way up. I don't think we need that. My headphones as well. well. Let's get the echo turned down. There we go. That sounds good, eh? And that ball. I believe just bunted there foul by Mason Mills. Thanks to Ryan Bowser, State Farm in Ford City, our scoreboard partner today and official broadcast partner of today's game. Check out Ryan online, ryanbowsersf.com, or stop in and see him. His experienced and caring staff will help you with all of your insurance needs. Ryan, a day one, as we like to call him. And as Drake said, someday we're going to have a party for our day ones. Ryan Bowser. You're invited. Four nothing River Hawks here. Bowser ahead of Ian Harkle Road, and Harkle Road lays down the bunt. That one just gets foul. It's one thing Coach Dentelmo and I talked about a little bit prior to the season. He said, "You know, we got some speed. These guys just have to put it in play." And that's been kind of an issue um, for Harkle Road for Zach Wiles, um, two seniors, two. Really, really fast guys. Huggle Road, you can see him. He's been playing center field here for three years. And I've seen him run down some balls that did not look like they were going to get caught. But uh, right there, you know, putting a bunt in play and allowing yourself uh, to use the speed is, is something that Coach Santelmo would like to do because you don't have, aside from right, you really don't have any power hitters on this team. I mean, of course, Logan Badak can get into one. So can Mason Treckengost. Carson Delano, maybe. Um, that ball in there, curveball, strike three, sitting down, looking. And Bowser has done a good job out there today for Penn Hills. He's through three innings, and we'll take a look at his line really quickly. Three innings pitched, three hits, four runs, three of them earned, six walks, and three strikeouts. So the six walks, obviously a killer, but you know, I got to say, Bowser has been uh, mixing it up pretty well. For these Penn Hills Indians, Riverhawks looking to take a sweep from Penn Hills. And I never, got, I don't think I ever got to yesterday's game. Uh, Armstrong 5, Penn Hills 2. Logan Badak, a nice game. 3 for 3, 2 RBIs, a run scored, and a double. Uh, Jablonski, another stolen base in that game. Check it out, see how many he has on the year so far, because he's got 3 today. Right still in there on the mound for the Riverhawks. We'll take a look at Chase's line. He's a really athletic kid. Uh, I thought he had a breakout year in football this year. Uh, was a little banged up. Didn't get uh, get much playing in, in basketball until the end of the season uh, because of the injuries from football. But a really athletic kid. And obviously you see he's got some speed. Three steals today. And we're going to check his yearly total when I get to that particular screen. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. All right. Armstrong Varsity Riverhawks 2-4 and four on the year. I, did, I do believe I said they were 2-4. and four. Uh, Before the win against the Indians, they had lost a couple to Penn Trafford and a couple to Plum. That uh, second game against Plum, really a oh, man, heartbreaker. They lost 6-5 to five at Plum, and they had chances. 
I mean, rallied, uh, had a chance to take the lead late, and uh, just couldn't get it done. So that pitch by right, sky towards center field. Harkle Road under it, and makes the grab, one down. So here we go, we're going to check the statistics for these River Hawks. Get them stolen bases. And we'll see where Jablonski is. Well, it says he only had one coming into this game, so that that first one must have been yesterday. And he's got three today, so hopefully for the Riverhawks, Jablonski off to the races. And right, first pitch in there for a strike. Going against the lefty. Okay, game changer. Why do you... It's like it, it, it thinks that I'm going to be... Uh, you know, streaming through Game Changer. I'm not Game Changer. I'm streaming through High Top Sports Network. So Mitchell up right now. 0 for 1. And right delivers. That one grounded towards short. Nice play. And firing. Does he have the gun? He does. Ginter again over there making a spectacular play. Goes down to one knee. Fields it on the backhand, gets up and fires across the diamond to Badak. A perfect throw to get the speedy Mitchell. And we saw Kinter with that bare hand earlier. I mean, that was a heck of a play. Picking it up, I mean, yeah, that's the luxury of having field turf. You're going to get pretty true hops, clean bounces. But uh, still a nice play nonetheless, right? Trying to get out of this inning and get through his fourth frame of the afternoon. A look at Braden's line right now. Three and two-thirds innings pitch. Just one hit allowed. No runs. No earned. Two walks, two strikeouts. So Braden Wright, uh, he knows how to work two contact and, and let his defense do the work. That fastball low for a ball. And we'll get back to the game stream here. Yeah, Austin, one for one. He's got the only Penn Hills hit. It was that double. And Austin was on that one again. That one down the line, but foul. Badak. That would have been tough to squeeze it between Badak and the line right there because Badak had it covered up pretty well. But I got to say, Austin kind of kind of on Braden right here. Lefty on lefty. You don't see that often, but Austin staying in. Keeping that front shoulder and elbow in. That ball just off the plate right by right. Missing four. Ball two. Make it two and two the count. And right delivers. Swing and a miss. He got Austin. Strikeout number three, four. Braden Wright. And that ends the inning. Four Penn Hills. Riverhawks four. Indians zero. As we head to the home half of the fourth inning. Josh Reckengast here with you on High Top Sports Network. Thanks for joining us, tuning in. Really appreciate all of the support. Not just today, but every day. I'm going to try and do something. Whoa, that is the echo. Wow, that sounds crazy. Sorry about that. Uh, it's one of those days.
Welcome back to High Top Sports Network. Josh Rettengast here with you. Home half of the fourth inning on this Ryan Bowser State Farm game day. So Jablonski out there at second base. Nobody down. Braden right at the dish. And right took a big hack at that on the 3-0. Got the green light and fouled it back. So Jablonski walked and then guess what he did? I bet you don't know. No, he didn't steal second. And that ball low and inside. Right draws the walk. So two aboard for the Riverhawks here. Bottom of the fourth. Nobody out. And coming up is Roy Bashir. One for two on the afternoon. Bashir playing right field today for Armstrong. You see him on the mound quite a bit. Good pitcher. Hitting from the right side of the plate. Still on the hill for these Penn Hills Indians. Is Bowser doing a pretty good job today. I mean, oh, excuse me. He was uh, actually replaced this past inning by Tierney. So Mason Trekkengast up with two aboard. Nobody out. Tierney working into his first inning for the Indians. Fires that ball high. So Trekkengast showing bunt right there. Pulled the bat back. That ball well high. And ball four. So some command issues here for Tierney. In the bottom of the fourth. Got the bases loaded now for the Riverhawks. Nobody out. And this is where he can break a game wide open. And you got a hitter up right now that certainly knows how to put the ball in play. Logan Badak. Coach Santelmo told me Schreckengost and Badak are his two best bats. So right now Badak getting a chance against Penn Hills here with the bases loaded. Bottom of the fourth. Armstrong up 4-0. And that ball does not catch the corner. 2-0. Boy, Tierney would have liked to have a call right there. So a 1-1 pitch coming here. Logan Badak does not have an official at bat today. And takes a big hack at that one, and Tierney blows a fastball past Badak. So down in the count, Logan is 1-2 right now. Tierney looking to get that out and not have the ball put in play. Need a strike out here. If you're Penn Hills, curveball just. Oh, they got him, Badak. Ooh, that was, that was high. Uh <laughs> Feel bad for Logan. He did not say anything, of course. You know, turned around and walked back to the dugout. But man, oh man, that curveball came in over the letters, it looked like to me. Of course, as I often say out here, I'm over 500 feet away. So I can't really uh, tell you with 100% accuracy that it was a ball. But I'm looking at my screen also whenever the game is going on. And, you know, that zoomed in view up in your top right hand corner. It's helpful to, to watch pitch location. Right saw it off right there. And they try to get a little mishandle at second base. The ball gets away. A couple of Riverhawks will come in to score. So a costly error at second. 
by Sipple. Is going to allow the Riverhawks to put two more on the board when that should have been at least one out. You know, you give up a run right there with a the fielder's choice. Not the end of the world, but two runs on that error, and it looked like just uh, Sipple couldn't get it out of his glove. And then you rush the throw, and the throw ends up going uh, past your shortstop there at second base. And the Riverhawks put two more in. Make it a 6 nothing game, Armstrong. And that ball popped up left side, and it's going to drop in fair. And another run will score. As Bashir gets the RBI single, excuse me, RBI double. He's out there on second base. Shrekin got scores from second. Make it 7 nothing Armstrong. As they look to take two. From Penn Hills over the past couple of days. So Tierney, a uh, uh, tough luck inning right there, you know. It's, uh, still only one away. Should have had at least two. I don't think you're going to turn a double play right there. Um, not that right is the most fleet of foot, but... You know, it's tough to turn a double play. Tierney delivers. Bunt. Oh, they call a strike there. On Zach Wiles. So down below, um, I'm going to try and get a camera on it if I can, is the Armstrong girls softball team. They are hosting Gateway right now. And Wiles gets that bunt down. Tierney. Nowhere to go with it. Didn't pick up the ball anyway. So the Riverhawks have the bases loaded again. <clears throat> Pardon me as I clear my throat there. Oh, the echo. I turned it up again. Turn that back down. Whoa, it's all the way up. Wrong way. Sorry about that. And that ball hit deep center field. All oh, the water puddling, puddling, puddling around Austin. He tracks it down, but a sacrifice fly. We'll get Carson Delano home. He came in to pinch run right there. And Delano... Makes the Riverhawks eighth run to cross the plate this afternoon. Eight nothing here in bottom of the fourth inning. Riverhawks have put four more on the board in this half inning. Sack fly right there. Oh, excuse me. I think Delano had the sacrifice fly. Apologies. So now Pashir at third base. And Zach Wiles still out at first. Two on, two out. And at the plate, Ian Harkle Road. Looking to maybe cash in one more. That one over the head of the ducking Harkle Road. Tierney missing. And off and running, throwing through, and cutting it off nicely wasn't the shortstop. That was Bollinger, and I was waiting to see if Pashir took off right there. He did not wisely. Stayed put. Uh, because Bollinger cut that ball off, that was a set play there for the catcher to throw to a particular spot with Bollinger on the move. And that ball missing outside. So a smart play by Bashir. He saw it the whole way. And ball four, another walk by Tierney. And yes, indeed, the bases are loaded once again for the Riverhawks. As Harkle Road draws the walk. Thank you. 
And ball upstairs to Chase Jablonski. Zero for zero this afternoon, but let's slide across Chase's line, the leadoff hitter. He's got three walks. And yes, indeed, three stolen bases. Zach Wiles with another, so four total for the Riverhawks in this game. And the count full, excuse me, three and one, apologies. Two down. And in there, four strikes, so full count. Incoming here, Tierney working against Jablonski. Payoff pitch. And that ball poked towards center field, but nicely measured on the line drive. Austin tracking that one the whole way. That kid is... Really comfortable out there in center field. That ball was hit on the screws by Jablonski, but no hesitation. Austin saw it the whole way. He ranged over to his left and made the grab. So that'll do it in the fourth inning. Armstrong eight. Penn Hills nothing. And we head to the fifth here. Let's get a word from one of our great sponsors on High Top Sports Network. And welcome back, High Top Sports Network. Josh Rengost here with you. I stepped on my headphone wire and about broke my neck. Couldn't lift my head. That was a shocker. <laughs> uh, keep that over here maybe and not step on it when I try and move around. Also, when things go your way, they go your way. Found the head for the tripod there for the uh, batter, pitcher, umpire, catcher cam. Tighten that up a little bit. And I'm looking down over the hill here. I'm going to try and get maybe a view uh, from far, far away of the Riverhawks softball team. As I said, they're playing Gateway uh, this afternoon. A lot of games being rescheduled uh, because of the weather last week. It was atrocious. So now Carson Delano in after Wright works four innings. Delano. Going to need him to step up this year. Coach Santelmo uh, was talking to me about it. And he said, you know, those innings uh, that Dustin Coleman and Hayden Brink took up last year, there's, there's no replacing them. You can't uh, think you're going to find someone that can go out there and be as effective. Um, but one thing that Coach Santelmo uh, mentioned was that Carson Delano, Braden Wright, 
uh, Rory Pashir, those guys having to step up and, um, you know, like I said, not replace the innings because, boy, Brink and Coleman, just a one-two punch. They were just absolutely fantastic last year uh, on the mound and in the order. So you're not trying to replace them number for number, but you have to have quality innings. And there's some guys, he said, look, I don't care what year you are, junior, senior, freshman, doesn't matter. If you can get outs, throw strikes, you're going to get a chance. Well, Delano misses high right there, so a leadoff walk issued to Spearman. He was 0 for 1 coming into that at bat. Delano walks his first batter. And I think I think we have a pinch hitter. I don't I'm waiting uh on the old G C. That's game changer. That was Bowlinger. O for O today. And that ball low from Delano. Five is the number of innings. I was gonna say five nothing. It's not five nothing. It's eight nothing, Armstrong. And Delano tries a little sidearm. I don't know what that was. Maybe trying to back up slider. Uh, but that misses inside. So Delano having a little trouble finding the strike zone right now. Spearman down there at first base after the walk. And that ball kind of just half swinged. Or half swung, I guess would be proper. Uh, was bowling or that kind of looked like uh, one of my golf swings. Just like regretting it immediately once you start it. And then try to stop your club, but you can't. And then you end up hitting the ball and it goes out of play. That's kind of what it looks like. Check in real fast on that Armstrong softball game going on down over the hill. Once Delano delivers this 3-1. And ball high. Bollinger walks to a board. Two walks issued uh, by Delano here as he comes on in relief of Braden Wright. And right now, out from behind the plate to calm his pitcher down is Mason Mills. Trying to get back to the old game stream here. All right, Bollinger down there at first after the walk. And, well, we got another one. Another Bollinger up here. Sorry, we don't. It's uh, actually Young at the plate. That was weird. A different initial. Um, but the same last name. Well, the uh, little pickoff move right there by Delano might have had Spearman leading just a little bit. Uh, but he was able to get back. No throw. Oh, they're going to call Bach on Delano. I, it looked really weird. So I'm not surprised the Bach was called right there. It just it just didn't look uh, natural. You know, he stepped and looked toward third. Nobody over there. And then he kind of crossed himself a little bit to get back and look at second. And so... Penn Hills calling for the Bach, rightfully so. They get it. And now their best chance of the afternoon. Two runners in scoring position. Nobody out. And Delano misses with that 0-1 to Young.
And ball high again. Delano just can't find it right now. And missing low, issuing another walk. Carson Delano. So coming in in relief of right, three straight walks. To open this top half of the fifth inning. A long meeting here at the mound for the Riverhawks. Uh, just going over the defensive alignment, I'm sure. And uh, trying to calm uh, Delano down a bit. All right, Delano to the rubber. And Tierney a chance right now to uh, erase some of the damage that was done against him in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And Tierney takes a cut, pops it up and out of play over the backstop. I just heard someone below me say something funny I can't repeat on the air. So I really <laughs> hope it didn't come through. I, I heard it in my headphones, but it, it was really faint. But I could hear it also uh, in their voice. And uh, yeah, definitely can't repeat it on the air. But it was funny. Our Armstrong track team just finishing practice. So might have been one of their athletes uh, letting some uh, profanities fly down there. So Delano missing again. Tough start uh, to this appearance for Carson Delano. Got Bowser to 0 and 2, but missed with the chase pitch, trying to offer up something that Bowser might go after. And high and over the helmet of Bowser right there. Well, good stop behind the plate right there. And getting a huge strike out of Bowser. Carson Delano with a wipeout curve. And I'll tell you what, Mason Mills, that's why you go to the clinics, kids. Uh, so you can get instruction that uh, turns it into instinct and move like that. Mills just exploding out of the crouch and getting over, knocking that ball down. Still bases loaded here for the Indians. And that ball skied out toward right field. Coming up throwing is Bashir, but well, he did switch you. <laughs> An exciting play right there for the Penn Hills fans. But it uh, ends up being all for naught as Burns goes down. And Penn Hills will walk away scoreless once more. As we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, Josh Schreckengast here with you. I'm up on the landing. It's not, I mean, I'm going to jinx myself by saying this, but it's not cold. It's not windy. I even put the Under Armour stuff on just in case, just in case. And I need to take it off. <laughs> it's a little warm. 
Check the game time temp. Well, right now, current conditions, 65 and cloudy. I didn't think it was going to get that warm uh, today, but hey, bring it on. High Top loves the sunshine. So taking a look out at the mound, looks like Tierney is back for another inning. And I've been promised you a score update on the Riverhawk softball team. It uh, looks like, well, that one might be about done here shortly. Uh, a lot of the fans have already started to vacate down there. We'll get to it here in just one second. Well, it's 8 nothing there as well, the Riverhawks girls. Over the gateway, Gators. Well, warm-up pitches are finished here. And Tierney getting ready for his second inning of work for the Indians today. Uh, down 8 nothing. All right. Well, I, I did pull up the softball game, game stream. It's now 10 nothing in the first inning down there. I uh, kind of knew that was coming, Gateway. Been struggling for several years in the softball department, and the Riverhawks have certainly had their way over the past three. That ball inside ripped, uh, but foul. Oh, wait, apologies. I think that might have been caught. I can't see. There's two, uh, two camera tripods in front of me, and yes, indeed, it was line out. I think that was Badak who was up. And Tierney misses right there. See now, this is weird. I just didn't. Do not remember a Penn Hills runner coming across, but they got it eight to one on the game changer. And I don't believe it is, but whoops. I'm dropping stuff. All right. Need to get that. That ball out over the plate and sky towards center, but right on it and measuring it perfectly once again is Austin, and he catches it up high. I love that. Love to see young kids. I mean, you know, the true uh, traditionalist in me would have said to uh, squeeze it with both hands, but Austin uh, really did a good job. He's like off on the crack of the bat, and that's exactly what you want from your center fielder is to, to see those reads. And he adjusts, you know, his right and his left. Uh, that was called in, uh, oh boy, in um, college women's softball. Can't hang on to this thing. Get back here. 
All right, top of the sixth, High Top Sports Network. Josh Rettengast here with you. Thanks to Ryan Bowser State Farm, Terry Steffi at Steffi's Country Catering, Armstrong Indoor Athletics. Thanks to Bugsy's Pizza and Wings, Damon Chiropractic, Mills Chiropractic. And all of our other wonderful sponsors here on High Top Sports Network. Got to change the inning right there. Let's do that. Top of the sixth now, 8 nothing. I think. Uh, the Game Changer had it 8-1 for a second. Uh, yeah, it still says 8-1. And I think it was just because of the, the, you know, the f similar play. Uh, you have to score something, and I think right now just the person running Game Changer it, it would have had to have taken some very detailed scoring. And that ball hit to shallow center field. Harkle Road under it. And that is out number one. Giddens in the pinch hit. Popped that one out to Harkle Road in center field. Easy out. A can of corn, they say. Or a can of corn. And that delivery up high. I recommended to uh, Armstrong co-athletic director Jay Canish today that an elevated press box needed to be constructed between the softball and baseball fields. And he agreed. I mean, it's it's something that I think this facility could really benefit from. And I'll tell you what, High Top would benefit from it as well. You know, you want to have something that's kind of a raised structure. Uh, the table would get up over the baseball bleachers, but also, uh, you know, be low enough to pick up the softball game from left center field. Two down here. Top of the sixth. <clears throat> Working right now to Mitchell. Got it in there for a strike on the corner. Nice pitch. By Carson Delano. And fouled away. Oh, that ball smoked. Deep right field, long run, and a diving attempt. My Pashir can't come up with it. And all the way around the bases, sliding into third. 
Is Mitchell a great at bat there? By Mitchell, it was a... Boy, man, he got that ball right on the sweet spot, and he hit it to a place where Rory Pashir came up about three inches short there, diving full extension for that ball, but it drops in, and an extra base hit first of the day for the old Armstrong. Well, River Hawks going to take a couple of licks here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And then try and lock it down in the top of the seventh for a second straight victory over Penn Hills. That's still Tierney for. Oh, maybe not. Well, the game changer says 8-1. I believe it's 8 nothing, but maybe it is 8-1. I mean, I didn't think the run scored on that particular play. I'm going to go back to it really fast and check it out and see where we are. Okay, 8 nothing. Okay, here we go. And that pitch in there for a strike. Wasn't able to get back and find that play just yet. Just missing at the knees right there. That was close. Right up from the left side. They had big lefty. And right sends a pop up third base line. It's not going to stay in play there. Gets out off the back of the bleachers. So new life there for Braden Wright. And that pitch and hits or swing. It just kind of looked like Wright had his mind made up. He was swinging no matter where the ball was. Oh, wow. Austin is playing him super, super shallow. At the plate, right, a 2-1 count, nobody out. Flinging batteries all over the place here, sorry. And right able to draw that walk down at first base now. 
And Pashir up also hitting from the left side. Well, I know the first thing I'm doing when I get back to the high top office, that's putting new AAA batteries in the remote for our camera. They worked last night at the Republican debate. They did not work today. I don't have the magic touch, apparently. I've been fiddling with them all game. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah. Incorrigible. These, bat these batteries are being incorrigible. All right, four. <coughs> excuse me. I was going to say four. Full count here to Rory Bashir. And ball inside. Missing there is Tierney. Another walk for him. And the Riverhawks have two more on base right now in scoring position. Take a look at Tierney's line. That is walk number six. Bowser at seven. So a lack of control here. For the Indians, uh, kind of haunting them. And I'm going to head over to the score of the Armstrong Gateway softball team game. And that is down over the hill. That's 12 nothing. Riverhawks put up a 12 spot. In the bottom of the first inning, now hitting uh, in the second. And a discussion amongst the umpires right now. Oh, excuse me, they put up a 10 spot in the first, and then two more in the second. And they are hitting right now in the second inning. And still a discussion being had with Centelmo and the home plate umpire. I mean, this has been going on for a few minutes now. I'm not really sure what the uh, what the reason is. And uh, both managers out. And each pointing separate ways. And I'll tell you what. Coach Centelmo is a no-nonsense guy on the diamond. And... You know, he knows the rules. He knows, you know, how to interpret them, how to play by them. Uh, and, and sportsmanship is huge for him. So, you know, it wouldn't be, I don't know. I hate to speculate what's going on down there, but it kind of looked like both managers were pointing at different players saying, you know, this guy should be here. They're batting out of order. Something like that, it seemed. Nothing uh, heated or... You know, uh, lack of respect for an opponent or the game or whatever. And Bunt laid down foul. So two on. Oh, why? Why? That echo dial is right under my thumb. The way that I'm holding this. So didn't mean to turn on the echo. It sounded like I was in a echo chamber. <laughs> Ball ripped into left field. Two hops. Three hops. Out to the left fielder and around to score. The ninth run of the ninth and tenth runs, or excuse me, the ninth run of this ball game. That ball was smoked by Zach Wiles. 
And I believe uh, that was Graham in there pinch hitting. Or pinch running, excuse me. And Graham does come home to score 9-1. I mean, I'm going to go with the game changer. It says 9-1. So that's how we'll put it up on our screen as well, 9 to 1. And Tierney delivers. That is a ball outside in Harkle Road at the dish. Hitting right now for Armstrong. Harkle Road is 0 for 1 this afternoon. And Harkle Road, line drive, base hit in the left field. And on the move is Bashir. He's going to get there. Nice to see the senior Ian Harkle Road get that RBI. I'd like to get his bat going here as we hit the heavy section schedule. Bottom of the sixth here, one away, 10 1, Riverhawks. Up now, Chase Jablonski, 0 for 1, 3 walks, 3 stolen bases. Man, that ball chopped. And I think that's going to be an infield hit for Jablonski coming up. Never making the throw was Mitchell. Armstrong back to having the bases loaded there after that infield hit. Mitchell must not have been able to get it out of his glove. I don't understand why he wouldn't have at least tried to make a throw. Unless he thought Jablonski was already there and he wasn't going to get him throwing on the run. But, man, the way it looked, the way he came in and charged it. And that ball gets through the infield. And coming in to score, Wiles and Harkle Road both. All 
And that's a walk-off. That uh, We are in the sixth inning, so make it 12-1. Riverhawks win. Well, the Riverhawks did what they needed to today, and that's take care of business against Penn Hills, uh, who remains winless on the year. And the Indians now 0-7 in 2024. Riverhawks up to 3-4 and now. So that is a final. And also down over the hill, that game just went final too. I'm glad I didn't uh, set up two broadcasts. Uh, that would have been pointless uh, because Armstrong just took care of Gateway and it looks like three innings uh, down over the hill. So softball and baseball win here at Armstrong today. We'll slide the camera over just a touch. And you can take a look at the River Hawks as they have their little post-game moment. Oops. Sorry about that. Well, Coach Santelmo, Coach Harriger, uh, everybody over there addressing the troops. We can make that uh, a little bit bigger if you like. Twelve-one victorious today. Armstrong able to take care of business against Penn Hills. Penn Hills last in the section standing, still winless. Let's just do this real quick. Really fast. Before I get into the Steffi's Country Catering post game report, make sure you check out Terry online. Just search at Terry Steffi on Facebook. You can put your order in there for those Sunday takeout specials. Remember, if you book Steffi's Country Catering to cater an event for you, just mention High Top Sports Network and receive a special 10% discount. It's only for an event. I've had people ask if uh, that applies to Sunday Takeout, too. I said if it did, I'd be mentioning High Top Sports Network to Terry every time I go over there and get Sunday Takeout, which is usually mm, every third Sunday when it's my turn to cook. Uh, <laughs> I always gladly take the compliments, even though I didn't do the actual work. Uh, just a ton of great stuff. So if you've never had it before, I urge you, urge you to try it. It's great. It's uh, great food. Uh, portion sizes are great. Home-cooked goodness. Uh, Terry and the gals over there, it's just, uh, oh, man. I love, I, love, I love making that little drive to go pick it up on a Sunday afternoon, especially during football season. i got to say that, you know, I'm definitely a more frequent Sunday takeout guy during football. Uh, it just seems to go so well. So the teams uh, are on the field. Well, the Penn Hills varsity team is about to 
check out there. I believe the JV follows this right up. I was trying to stretch that um, that's not letting me for some reason oh well uh, I was trying to stretch the uh, little post game meeting there to, to make it a little bit bigger on your screen but uh, for some reason it's not letting me select it so apologies for that but hopefully you enjoyed uh, this afternoon's broadcast Riverhawks 12 the Penn Hills Indians won. We got to pick a Damon Chiropractic player of the game. Damon Chiropractic, family owned and operated for a good long time down there. Justin, uh, Dr. Justin Damon, his grandfather started the practice. His father took it over. Now, third generation. Justin Damon, KHS class of 1996. Justin and I were classmates all the way back in the 20th century. Uh, we also went to West Hills Primary School together, so I've known Dr. DeMond for quite some time, well before he was a doctor. Uh, but you can always kind of see that uh, Dr. DeMond was in his future. But uh, go down to a DeMond chiropractic, and he'll straighten you out, pun intended. Uh, as I mentioned, three generations helping people feel better. And uh, one thing I will say about Dr. DeMond, he is focused on having you avoid the operating table at all costs. You know, surgery as a last option, Dr. DeMond. State-of-the-art techniques and equipment down in McGran. Uh, you can find him online on Facebook. You can find him, of course, physically down there in McGran. Um, and you can... Stop in, book an appointment. Dr. DeMond is very, very flexible when it comes to working with insurance and working uh, with your budget. So highly recommended by High Top Sports Network. Thanks to Dr. DeMond for being a fantastic sponsor and our player of the game sponsor today. Boy, I got to tell you, this is going to be a tough one to pick. I feel like some guys that needed to do some things did some things. And I feel like we got some innings, some solid innings um, from some Armstrong pitchers. I thought Braden Wright, you know, he, his control, it's always kind of an issue with him. If he can't snap that curveball off, you know, he gets into some issues with some walks. And, you know, it becomes, I don't really know how to explain it. It just kind of snowballs on him. I'm going to go through the box score here and just, I mean, Chase Jablonski at the top of the lineup, no slouch right there today. Didn't have a hit, but on base three times, three walks, three runs scored, and yes, three stolen bases. That's impressive. Braden Wright uh, going to pick up the win today, four innings pitched, one hit, no runs allowed, no earned runs allowed, two walks. And three strikeouts. Oh, just taking a quick perusal. Oh, Rory Bashir. Yeah, he hit the ball well today. Uh, Rory was two for three with an RBI, a run scored, and a walk. Oh, boy. That's a tough one. I got to tell you, it's tough. It's tough having to pick a uh, player of the game on a day where everybody contributes something positive that led to the victory. Man, that's a tough one. I'm, I'm mulling it over in my head. I mean, Braden Wright, uh, he needed a good pitching performance, only allowing one hit. Of course, this Penn Hills lineup, as I said, you know, not to be disparaging, but, you know, they, they're not as historically known for baseball as they are for football or basketball, let me tell you. I'm mulling. You know, Ian Harkle wrote, as I mentioned, getting that hit, the RBI, a couple of walks on base three times, had, you know, an impact on this game defensively as well. I 
Well, I'm going with Braden Wright. You know, uh, there's only so much. There's only so much. Um, what's the word? Justification that you can do to give it to somebody else. But Braden Wright, four innings pitched today. All right. One hit allowed. No runs. A few strikeouts. A couple of walks. Not an overpowering performance, but you know what? Did his job. Went out there. Got uh, got the team four innings. Saved his arms. Saved some other arms by being efficient. And he was also good at the plate. He found the gaps that he needed to find. And he went one for three. Four runs batted in and a walk. Yeah, one of those walks was with the bases loaded, I believe. Man, right. Also a two-run single, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'm looking on here, and the junior varsity about ready to take the field. Oh, that kid's out there. Well, it's a practice. Uh, that's why. Well, somebody's throwing. He's a youngster. Pretty good form here. Well, not bad. Probably see him in a Riverhawks uniform here very, very shortly. So Armstrong picks up a much-needed win. A sweep of the Indians here in section play. Riverhawks now 3-5 and five on the year. Uh, trying to get back to those WPIL playoffs. It's been... Well, it's been a good, uh, you know, about 18 months or so from for Coach Santelmo and this team, you know, back to the Whippeal playoffs for the first time in quite some time and really trying to establish a culture here. You know, one thing that, one phrase that Coach Santelmo used a lot uh, when I first met him, well, not when I first met him, but when, I, when he first got the job was, you know, uh, put down roots. That's what we want to do is put down roots, establish a culture, an identity, and uh, be a successful program, be a respectful program, and, uh, you know, a program that prides itself on giving everybody, doesn't matter your age or, you know, if you play a bunch of travel ball or AAU ball or whatever, everybody a fair shot. And I think Coach Sintelma has done a great job of that, um, particularly with uh, some seniors over the past, well, over these, these two seasons. You know, sometimes you, you you think, well, he's a senior. we got to start him. And Coach Antelmo, as I said during the broadcast, said, it doesn't matter if you're a freshman, sophomore, whatever. You're going to get a chance. And if that is at the, you know, sacri sacrifice of some innings for maybe an upperclassman, well, so be it. And that, I think, helps to spur healthy competition, which, you know, that's how you win games. Uh, guys go out there with a mutual respect. They compete against each other. And if, you know, the coach handles it correctly and everybody looks at it objectively, you can handle those situations without creating a major disturbance. And I think Coach Sintelma has done a, a very good job of that because, to be quite frank, you know, there were distractions around this program for several years. And of all kinds. It's not just a coach or a player or whatever. It was just a... It was tough to keep up with. But now I think Coach Zentelmo's, uh, you know, he's got people in line uh, to repeat that message. And, uh, you know, who better than Denny Harriger to, to, to repeat your message? A guy went to the major leagues. And, you know, that is something that very, very, very few people get to say. Uh, I think there's only about, in the history of Major League Baseball, I think there's about 22, 23,000 players all time. I mean that wouldn't even fill up PNC Park, so we can't we can't hate people that <laughs> that much for being, <laughs> but you got to uh, you got to really respect it. Coach uh, Sentelmo's done a great job here, I think, and you know I openly say that on our broadcast. I say it to him when I talk to him. I think he's the most important thing you can be as a high school coach is fair, and that is. Coming from a guy who played sports his whole life and, you know, encountered different uh, things, coaches saying one thing and doing another, or, and, you know, it never, if I wasn't better than the guy I was competing against and I didn't play because of it, so be it. I was fine with that because the better guy should be out there giving our team a chance to win. 
And, you know, if I get my shot, I have to capitalize on it. That, that was stuff that I took upon myself. But, you know, nowadays, I hate to sound like an old guy, but nowadays it's not really the mentality. It's, well, I play in seven travel teams, and, you know, I play Legion Ball here, and I do this there, and, you know, it just becomes a, a debate. <laughs> and that's uh, something that Coach Santelmo has stressed, and he stressed it to the parents. One thing that I really like that he did uh, was make his players take home this was last year, a parent contract, and I thought that was genius. You know, because any game you watch, if your kids play travel, you know this. And I've been guilty of doing it myself, not to the extreme extent, but coming over and giving your kid a little a little something in the ear, a little something in the ear, some advice, maybe some technique, whatever. That is not allowed anywhere near the Armstrong dugout, and I love that. I think it's a fantastic idea to have a parent contract hey when your kids are on the field we are going to coach them you can talk about it on the way home you can talk about it whenever uh but during the game we're doing the coaching and i think that's a that's a really really good idea and i and i hope it uh something similar uh kind of catches on i think the parent contract should be mandatory for all sports because you know parents sometimes you know are a little overzealous in their critique and in their overestimation of maybe their kids own talent um and it becomes a distraction and you know my original point was how well coach Santomo's has done of eliminating and minimizing distractions since taking over here uh, getting the Riverhawks to the playoffs last year and trying to do it again this year. So that's going to do it for me. Josh Rangoss here at Armstrong Junior Senior High School. The Riverhawks are victorious. I say 12 to 1. Again, game changer cut me. It says 11 to 1. So I guess go with game changers score. I'll change it real fast here before we get out of here. Uh, that's what it says. 11 to 1 Riverhawks in six innings over Penn Hills. All right, that's going to do it. I'm going to sign off here. A little practice going on across the way. Thank you to our wonderful sponsors, specifically Ryan Bowser State Farm. Thanks, Ryan. Great service with surprisingly great rates. You're not going to believe it, but it is true. Ryan's going to take care of you. Trust me. Uh, great guy, known him a long time, and that's one thing about our sponsors. Uh, you know, we don't just give them lip service and take a check. We patronize them, and if you're ever, ever in need of any of our sponsors' goods, services, or heck, even a meal, make sure you check them out. All right, recapping the final one more time. Armstrong 11, Penn Hills 1. Stay tuned to the network. Stay tuned to our social media platforms. And find out where we'll be tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. Who knows? But make sure you follow us on Facebook. Just search at High Top Sports. You can follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, at High Top underscore sports. We have an Instagram at High Top Sports Network. Heck, all you got to do is type High Top Sports Network into your Google search. And pretty sure we're the first thing that comes up. And uh, make sure you look at the YouTube page as well. Um, the, the High Top channel on YouTube. You can go back, uh, view past broadcasts, and uh, of course you can see what happened just today. All right, I'm really done this time, I promise. Got to pack up here and get all this equipment down to the parking lot. So I'm going to do that now. Everybody have a great evening. Wishing you... All the best. Josh Trekking signing off. Stay safe and be well.